I think it's safe to say that I have a record collection. It's 2000 of them and I digitized them all. And a question you're gonna ask me is why, but hopefully also how. The how, that's what this video is about. The why, three reasons, preservation, convenience, and when records are recorded, you know, the, the music goes into the groove and the more wiggly the groove gets, the louder the music gets. But there's a limit to how much a stylist can wiggle. So the louder the music, the wider the groove, the wider the wiggle. So they gotta keep the volume down, which forces them to master relatively quietly. Often vinyl masters are done less loudly, less aggressively, less limited and compressed than digital masters, which is why I am not too happy about the state of the streaming world. There's a lot of good streaming services that sound awesome, but the studios that master the recordings often master for digital in a way that I think sounds very fatiguing. So I just prefer a vinyl master. That's the whole reason actually these days I still listen to vinyl. I love collecting it. Of course, it's, it's a great hobby, but also because of the mastering, to my ears, it sounds nicer. I am convinced that digital can sound just as good especially in a high bit rate. So I'm sure you know, digital is just ones and zeros. There's only a choice between one and zero. So you have to chop everything up. And the more little pieces you chop music into, uh, the more natural it sounds. And this is called a sample rate. And a CD has a sample rate of 44,100 Hertz. And I digitize my records in a sample rate of 192,000 Hertz. So it's a lot of tiny little pieces and it just makes everything sound a lot smoother, a lot more natural, a lot more organic. Some people are completely not sensitive to this. I find the sound of a CD, even in a really good CD player, very fatiguing compared to analog sound that does not have any sample rate, that is a continuous flow of sound. So in a high resolution digital file, I get as close to that as possible and I can really enjoy high quality digital audio. So how do I make these files? That's what this video is about. This is my living room audio rig, now accompanied by a little table with my phone on it so I can show you the test cam which is standing right here it's a pretty professional digital recorder which can record dsd streams which is incredible high-end digital audio but very unpractical to work with and digital pcm streams up to 24 bits 192 kilohertz which is exactly what it's set to it just powered up i'm going to put it into record pause mode and as you can see lights go on and it's ready to record it's that simple it works pretty much like a cassette deck Quite nice. The record that I'm gonna digitize is this record by Catorba River Fox. You may not have heard of them. You may have heard of The Wolf and The Wolf singer Pablo van der Poel. This was pretty much his thesis for his university. So this record uh, is recorded in his home studio and it's not the best pressing. It was a, a limited edition. There's only 500 of them. And um, it has some errors. It has some, some pops and noise, which is great because that's actually something we're gonna work on once it's digital. I'm gonna put this record on the record player. It has been cleaned. I use a Keith Monks Discovery One record cleaner. Just gonna give it a brush because it may have gotten a bit dusty in the meantime. This is a Levin Design brush, pretty nice. So let's check our levels. Let's turn the amplifier on so you can actually hear what's going on. Now, digital recording levels are an interesting one. Um, Digital recorders perform best up to minus six decibels. Uh, generally, they say nominal about 12, minus 12. Um, I just set it to uh, a fixed value. Not every record is equally loud, but because it's digital and we are always around that nominal minus 12 mark, uh, it's fine this way. I don't need to adjust it for every record as I'm gonna uh, post-process it anyway in the audio editing software. As you can see, we're now sort of peaking to minus nine, which is very acceptable. Uh, you can also see that the right channel is a bit lower, but it's a minimal difference. Uh, some records have a bit of a deviation, uh, but the levels look good. So all I have to do now is uh, start the record over uh, and uh, start recording. There you go. Let's turn the volume up because this is good music. It doesn't matter that there's silence in the beginning because we're gonna edit that all out. By the end of this side, I'm going to uh, pause the recording, the recorder will start a new file, and I'm going to do the same for the B side.
and it's done. So that's that record all digitized. Let me take it off the record player, stop the recording, put the record back in its sleeve, sort of kind of really important. Then I have a little stack of records here in a rack that I use specifically for this, which has the records I just digitized. I'm gonna turn off the desk cam and take the SD card out. And then we go to my computer. Welcome to my desk. I'm gonna pop this SD card into my computer. Here we are. And I'm gonna fire up Adobe Audition, which is my software of choice. So there's plenty of alternatives. Audition is very easy for that, but it's not cheap. So uh, your best options are, most people use Audacity. Uh, and uh, I personally like Awesome Audio, which is, they're both free, so they could be good alternatives. But I'm going to show it to you with Audition, and in the future I'm going to do a video on how you can also do this without maybe owning or buying all the stuff that I use for this. Uh, that said, I did put Amazon affiliate links in the description below, so you can click them and see how much this stuff costs and whether it's still available on Amazon. Uh, feel free to click around, even if you don't buy anything. Amazon will notice that and it will be good for my income stream, of which there is right now none. So this is an experiment. I have no idea if it's going to work, but feel free to click around. Maybe buy something else that also works. Uh, and let's see if I can get a little bit more income out of this. Not because I want to get rich, because that's not my plan, but because you guys regularly ask me to review stuff. And since I don't have any sponsors or companies that want me to review their stuff, I can't really buy anything. So who knows, this may actually work for both of us. I'm going to start recording on my computer so you can see what's going on. I'm going to import these files. So you will notice there's a DA3000 titled card here that is the card made by uh, the Tascam DA3000, unsurprisingly. And you see there's quite a few files on there because I did a pile of records. I usually don't just, just do one. In this case, I did three, two of which were double LPs. But we're only going to look at the last two files now, which is site A and B of this Katol by Riverfox record. So that's file 9 and 10. And of course, it's now doing them all, so this is going to take a little while. Actually, this one doesn't have a little clock anymore, so apparently it's done. So here you can sort of see there's like, that's the music, very lovely. There's like gaps in the sound. Now, some of them are actually the quiet bits between tracks. Some of them are just quiet bits in tracks. Like here, you can see it goes very quiet when I zoom in, and you will hear... end of a track and then there the next one starts so that is how you can see where tracks begin and end i'm going to turn the volume a bit here because it's a bit quiet we're going to first divide this up into tracks well first actually we're going to combine the two sides of the record uh, there's some quiet before as you can hear there's a lot, a lot of pops and clicks we're going to do something with that later that's where it starts we're going to cut this off delete and at the end it's the same story you will see that the music ends Still talking a bit. And then it goes quiet. So I'm going to cut this bit off. And in order to not make the background noise disappear quite aggressively, I'm going to do a little fade out at the end. I'm going to select all this and copy it. It's a bit slow now because it's still importing files on the left here, as you can see. But it's copying. Make sure you wait until it's done copying because whatever you're going to paste now is not going to be the right thing. You're going to have to wait until it's all copied. So end of this file, we can work on it while we wait. As you can hear, that's the ending of side A. Give it a bit of time because you don't want the tracks smashed against each other. Delete whatever is there. Is it done copying? No, it's almost done. And we're done. Paste. Uh, that is now the waveform. As you can see, there's still a lot of room left on the top uh, because it's not recorded that loudly. We will work with that later. Uh, but first, I will zoom in a bit so I have a bit of overview. And I'm going to find where the tracks begin and end. I'm going to put a marker. Marker, track one. So where does that end? It's about four minutes. Here's the end. And just before the new one starts, you can see marker and when you zoom in you see the marker actually oops you can see the marker is just before the music starts it's pretty tight listen so that is perfectly fine it doesn't have to be up to the millisecond because who cares a little bit of 
silence after you press play doesn't really hurt. That's a, 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 a quiet piece. I think this is the end of the song. Nope, that's also a little break. This is the end of the song. Here it is. And next marker. And so that's how we do the entire tr the entire record. We just make markers at the beginning of every track. That one's a bit too early, but you can just move them. And now it's nice and tight. That's the same song. You gotta know your records. Bit late. Let's move that one too. And I think that ends right here. Still the same song, just a quiet little bit. It's a long song, Ballad for the Narrow Minded. Beautiful song, by the way. And the next song starts there. And that is the last song. Now you also want to make a marker at the end of that so it knows where it ends and then you combine the markers because you want it to be a track that it doesn't know yet whether that last marker is the beginning or the ending of a song until you just tell it this is all the markers and then it combines them nicely. Now what I usually do is I go to Discogs and I check in my collection whether um, whether the track count is correct. So Catoba. Here it is. How many tracks does it have? It has five and four is nine. Well, that's correct. As you can see, there's nine tracks here. So we got our nine tracks. Now, what I'm gonna hunt for now is pops in the sound. I see a bit of a weird peak here. That usually is a pop, let's see. Did you hear that? Let's go again. There's a pop. It's actually two, really close together. See, here's one and there's one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that pop and press silence. That's actually somewhere here, silence, but I put it under F because that key was free. Now it's not gone, it's quieter. So let's see. Okay, the other one's still there, obviously. Let's do this. Don't select too little, don't select too much. If you select too little, you will still hear a bit of it. And it's gone. So that was a visible peak. Here's another one that stands out. Not a peak, sometimes it's just something in the music, sometimes it's a, a pop. Not too many loud pops in this record, thank goodness. There's one. It is a bit hidden in the music, but it was definitely one. As you can see, this one's mostly on the left channel, so what I tend to do is take the right channel, copy and paste it over the left channel, and nothing to hear there. And that's how you just take pops out of the whole record. There's way, loads of ways of doing this, but for loud pops, that's usually what I, I think I already had that one. That's usually what I do. What do we have here? Is this a pop? No, I can already see that's part of the music. So no, not that many pops in this record, which is great. So what I'm gonna do now, now that the pops are out, because they may be unwanted peaks, I'm going to normalize the record to, zero dBs. Now, officially digital audio prefers minus one dB as a maximum, but because it's so dynamic, the peaks will only be very short. So I'm okay with that. Um, and as you can see, it's now the zero dB mark is right here on the top. It is now all limited to the same level. It limits it to the highest peak of the entire record. So you don't want that to be loud pops because that will ruin your peak search. <laughs> quite a bit louder as you can see. Uh, now the thing is, this is something that not everyone's going to agree with. Uh, this record is recorded on a tape recorder that was not set up properly. It sounds a bit muddy. So what I tend to do is actually work with it a little bit. So I listen to the tracks. And there's not that many highest highs, so I tend to sometimes slightly equalize. a major difference but it makes it a bit more lively which is nice in this case. This song has plenty of highs so I'm not going to bother with that one. Now, this song is a bit quiet compared to the rest of the record which is intentional but the difference is a big, bit big to my taste and we have plenty of space to work with so I'm just giving it a little extra so the highest peaks are similar to the other high peaks because it does have a loud bit right here as you can see. This one here. This one too 
sounds a bit muddy so we have these settings do they work I like the little bit of added high uh, you gotta watch it though if you uh, change equalization or like do some multiband compressing or anything like that it may get louder or quieter if that difference is too big you may want to adjust it same for this one bit hollow exactly the same way as the previous ones yep that works so sometimes I take this way further and I use the, the multiband compressor and I use this equalizer and all of the other options that this software has. Uh, but this record just doesn't need much. So I'm just giving it a little bit of an edge. This, this song sounds fine actually. This one does too. And this one is supposed to sound a little quirky. Now this record has a few issues where there's uh, pops in the sound consistently. Listen, in this quiet bit you hear it very clearly. I could cut them out one by one, but that's ridiculous. So that's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do now that the levels are correct and I did a little, e little bit of equalization that I like, I'm going to export this to a file, to my desktop in this case. I'm going to call it Catawba River Fox ST for self-titled. And I'm going to export that. And then I'm going to start another piece of software called Isotope RX8. Now I'm not a fan of using filters for uh, removing noise. But this software does an absolutely amazing job. You should always be careful because you don't want to overuse it. You don't want to hear it work. But um, for the smaller background noise, little clicks, it is ridiculous. I'm gonna open this file. Which file was it? It was the song, let me see, marker eight. Okay, let's open marker eight in, here we go, in, RX8 and we have this quiet bit here I'm gonna select that bit and I'm gonna preview it with the D clicker on and it's gone now if I go for output clicks only There's the clicks. It finds them, it even counts them here, can you see? So let's render that and the clicks will be gone. Uh, this is pretty heavy software. If your computer is not up to the task, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting. But if it is, this is, this is an absolute gem. I really, really love this. Look at the, at the shape. Did you see all the little bits uh, disappear? Let's undo that so you can see it again. See, and again, and there they go. There will be more little clicks, and I'm not too bothered by those, but those were very audible. I'm going to quickly check the tracks to see if there's any clicks left. You can usually hear, you can usually hear when there's a track that's going to be noisy, because it will already start clicky. Yeah, that has some clicks right in the beginning, did you hear? Let's see how long they will continue. Still there. And they're gone. So the beginning had some clicks. So I'm going to de-click those as well. Let's preview it and check the clicks. So you can hear it's quiet now. The clicks are there. So let's remove those because they're quite noticeable in a quiet track like that, right? So let's remove those. Look at the form. Now you barely saw them, but they were there and they are gone. So let's save that. And then let's check track four. I ran down to Nothing major. I just won. It's vinyl. I don't mind a click or two. Uh, it just shouldn't be annoying. I did notice at the end of the record I had quite a few. Where it goes all quiet. I'm just going to remove them so you can hear the, the guys talking properly at the end. Because there's a lot of... Uh, ooh, misclicked. There's a lot of uh, random talks going on, which is cute. Look at the waveform, you should be able to see it here pretty well. There you go, all the peaks are gone, all quiet. Let's undo it so you can hear the difference. 
all the little clicks and then I redo it and so the thing you gotta be careful with is uh, it looks for really short sharp sounds in a certain frequency spectrum so if you have uh, weirdly recorded music with, with digi digital drum effects or whatever, Radiohead tends to have that, where there's like these little clicks in the sound. Sometimes it thinks those are th those are clicks from the record and it removes them. So be careful. This is great software, but you gotta know how to use it. So that is that. And now come to titling. And that this this piece of software is just, this saves me. So we have, we have um, Discogs open here. I'm gonna copy this. Uh, catalog number or the disk of catalog number and I'm going to throw these files into mp3 tag enter the catalog number it finds all of the titles as you can see and then I'm gonna go number and then it changes the uh, ID3 info into song titles which are now perfect as you can see and all I need to do now is copy this command that I put there because for some reason it doesn't automatically do that and paste it for the technical info and there you go. These are now perfectly titled and ready to go onto a stream. That is how I digitize a record. Um, again, using Adobe Audition and using uh, Isotope RX8 really, really helps. Uh, makes it a lot easier. But uh, even with simpler software like Ocean Audio, which I don't think I have on here. No, I don't. Or do I? Uh, no, but look at it. Here you go. You see, it's very similar software. It's a lot simpler, but it does all the same things. Um, it's great for this kind of work if you don't want to um, pay for software. Um, you can also record an awesome audio, which is great if you want to use uh, your computer to record records, to digitize records, which is fine if you have uh, like a couple of hundred to do. But if for 2000, it's really nice to have a standalone machine. So uh, highly recommended this. I prefer it over Audesti um, because I always think Audesti is a bit of a pain in the backside to work with. Also, it's incredibly ugly, as you can see, but professionals use it. It's apparently really good software also for multi-tracking, but for stereo editing, I like Audition and Austin Audio is a really good alternative. So now we have this beautiful ready to be played file and I'm gonna throw that onto my music stream folders into the folk section there it goes and that way I can easily stream it on my streamer so you go to server my disk station which is a NAS music it can also for some reason do other things I always go to by folder because I have my own folder system folk and you can see Catawba River Fox not complete yet it's still copying so I'm not gonna bother playing that now but let's try what do we have um, yeah, the wolf. And in the, in the living room, the sound is now quiet, but in the living room, it now starts playing uh, the wolf's grandson electric. For some reason, it doesn't show uh, album art when using a NAS, but I don't think that's a big deal at all. Uh, in general, this works really well. Uh, Yamaha Musicast, I think, is the best streamer software out there. Although there's, uh, there's plenty of good streamers, the blue sound stuff's not bad. And uh, are we in focus? I'm actually not sure it's now in autofocus. The blue sound stuff isn't bad. And uh, Cambridge sounds really good, but I like the Yamaha software. Even though it's not the best sounding streamers, it is definitely working very well. If you can find yourself a WXC50 or an MPS303, and then you pair it with a nice external DAC, like maybe a Cambridge DAC Magic or so, you have a really nice sounding setup. Uh, by now it's all copied, so this is done. That's how I digitize my records. And actually, it's, it's lovely work to do. I adore this. So I uh, hope you learned something today. There will be an upcoming video on how to do this on the cheap. Um, so be back for that soon. Uh, don't forget to check the links in the description. And I hope you have a lovely day.